All right, guys, so welcome back to the Fast Host Power Tournament. It is the third map, and uh, let me change that, do that, get ready, good to go. Third map now, 1-1 one, one is the map score. Rayvon against I Am Gaming. As we saw the first map go 13-7 in favor of I Am Gaming, and the second map go 13-7 in favor of Rayvon. So very close, very much opposites. And now we sit on Backlot, which should look like that on your screen, all pretty. I have it on full screen, so... You know, me being worried about that, we're good to go though. Either way, it's the ninth round, and we'll see. I don't think it's really going to matter too much about who gets the the uh, the ninth round in this one. I, if anything, they'll probably go for defense. I'm one of the people that'll go. I would go for defense purely because you can set the sp uh, the speed of the game on attack um, with the map like Backlot, where you are a lot more open to being able to wall bang pretty much anything. Um, it's really something that they need to use to their advantage. And uh, the attacking side allows for that to occur a lot more than what, you know, something like Strike would. You can't just really walk into, like, mid-house and spray endlessly into the A-building. Whereas on mid uh, on Backlot, I feel it's a lot more, you know, accessible to do. A lot more... Um, I feel it's a lot more... I don't know. It's open to do. You, you can do it. And you can get away with... You can stand in the mid-building with a couple of teammates still alive and easily still uh, shoot into mid. and not take too much flack for it, at least. Either way, though, let's see how this one's going to be playing out. Raybon on the attacking side. I am gaming, have chosen defense. Let's look at the scopes, though. Dedo is the only one with a scope. And I'd like to point that out, because it's such a close-range map, you will generally only see the uh, scope, if any, on the attacking side. Sometimes um, all these scopes will just drop their weapons and go for the, uh, the AK to add the firepower to the arsenal. I am... Gaming, on the other hand, seem to be starting off strong. They've already got three frags to open this round up. We do see dupes on AK, as you can see, they're in the kill feed. Chris on to Dins. Phil, your last man standing for... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Is it actually full? No, it's not. It's Dedo, because Promod lies to me. And now Deaglin now takes out Chris. Of course, Franz is going to jump over the wall with the SMG, close him off. And then I'll take it to... Well, the first round going in favor of I Am Gaming. Dupes getting himself a comfortable two frags. In the start there. Still no egg. Sorry, still no scope from him. I'm going to take it away here with Dupes though, as uh, he has got that B side, which does seem to seem, does seem to seem, does, does seem to see quite a bit of action. Smokes and, f oh, sorry, Flash and Nade have gone out from Dupes though, so uh, he will now only have his AK to rely on. It doesn't seem like he's going to be too aggressive on the B side. Does take a peek into mid. His fellow AK, Gotti, on Gerda's spots. Dins, I believe that was, as he did get tagged up. Stuzor on turn has spotted a player on the MG burn. Oh, Ricky with a nice little jump shot takes out Stuzor. Not often you see that one. And now Dins is going to be pushing into mid, taking advantage of the fact that he's still alive, I guess, as uh, earlier on Gotti did miss those shots on him. Chris of the Deagle, though, does shut down Dins. And now Dead is still trying to find some frags. And this is the problem I find with the scope on backlog. Once you're on the attacking side with it, you have so few positions you can actually peek with it, and you can't get close range. So uh, I really feel this is why the AK has got the advantage. I mean, yeah, you, you can have the picks here and there. Maybe on the B side if you're able to push up to the top ruins. But, I mean, that's still a very difficult position to try and get into with scope on the attacking side. So on attack, I mean, we're going to see him here push forward with that deagle. He is still trying to find some position to play, some position to cover. Deep stakes out Nike, and Dead is just going to have to sit in tight. Even if, if a player comes around the corner, he doesn't have much. He's got the hope of a no scope. Connecting does land the shot onto Franz, though, front eight. Looking good so far. And now Rickert sitting top mid. Sorry, top mid? What am I saying? Top A. Spots Deep stakes him out. God, he's your last man standing. Where is this man? He's actually trying to defuse the bomb. And there we go. Dedo drops down to Gotti's AK. Tries to go for the defuse. Rickard just falls in from the bricks doorway. And that's going to push it to 1-1. Anyway, guys, send the link out there. Go spread, spread the link to the stream to all your mates. Put it on your Twitter. Put it on your Facebook. Get a whole bunch of people watching. And we'll see how this final map plays out. Phil pushing forward. He's going to have the bomb in hand. There is not much defenses from I Am Gaming in A at all, actually. Spray coming in. Got it. Takes out Phil. 
And it deeps onto Rekka. Nink is the only one to reply. Dins trying to peek out towards Gerdes. But he's got to be careful. He's got a player moving up to his left hand side. It is Fraz who shuts him down. Dedo is still sitting in Link. And really, this is why I think just that extra fire power on A, if you would have gone towards mid building, somewhere towards that line, I think it would have played a lot better into his hands. Unfortunately, not so. Stuzel's going to make his way into lower mid. It looks like Dupes has gone all the way around and should be able to find himself the Frank. It does do so. Dedo goes down and I am gaming. Pick themselves up. Another round here to push it to 2 1. Dupes sitting on six frags after just three rounds. Looking good for him so far. And uh, Dedo's still not deciding to drop scope. He has got a mid building spawn, but unfortunately does not decide to go that way. And instead gets the nade onto Dupes. Very fast B push here though from I sorry from Ravon Gaming. Oh, just from Ravon. I am gaming that is. Stuzel has made his way onto the B site. Duns takes him down with a lovely headshot with the SMG. And now it is all up to Chris and Frazman to try bring this one back. Although with the defensive positions being set up, the bomb going down any second. I feel Ravon have got this one in the bag. Chris grabs himself a frag. Fraz gets tagged up a little bit. Full is going to be encountering a player here on top of Ruins. It is Fraz who does go down. Rickett closes off Chris, and that'll push it to 2-2. Evening it out once more. So close. Now, there's still no escape from Deeps. It seems that he's just not feeling it yet. Chris could be pushing up on B-side. Definitely want to keep an eye on him. See how he's going to be playing aggressively. And maybe get himself a frag or two. Oh, he doesn't actually find anything, and that's very detrimental for the, the Ravon side, because of course that just means that there's one less SMG on the A side. They definitely should look to press that pressure, or put the pressure on A. But it doesn't look like they're going to do that at all. The dead is still trying to find some picks over towards A on top of Ruin. Stuzel takes out Rickert, and I am gaming sit with that one man advantage. Now Dedo is still trying to find something here. He's going to go back and pick up the bomb. Maybe move over towards the B side a little bit. Nike seems to prefer the A area. And so they will be moving over there. He's going to be going through the lower entrance. Not going to be silent climbing up towards top A. And of course crossing this top... Or sorry, crossing that doorway means that he does expose himself to ruins. He has not moved all the way up into the A side. There's a player just around the corner. He's right inside. Get him by the right. Yes, he can. Takes out Gotti. Has not got an AK2 to work with. Should be able to find himself a frag or two. Doesn't do so. As both of the I Am Gaming players are sitting in tight. Unfortunately for Nike, the bomb was dropped in mid. And now we'll have to try and go and retrieve it. And move all the way back over towards A. Giving away his position with every step he makes. The sound he makes. Oh, fine. Stuzo actually. Really nice shot from him. And now only needing to go for dupes. Although, of course, as that smoke goes down, dupes gets away his position. Can the bomb go down? Yes, he can. Nakey's going for it. Spray coming in onto his position. My word. Can Nakey pull off a one versus three here? Looks towards mid, but yes, he can. Lands the shot onto dupes. Brings it back for his team. Pushes it to 3 2. And that'll give them the one run advantage here in the third map. And that is such a morale booster. No doubt they're going to be screaming at their PCs, even if it is at home. Trust me, everyone's had that moment where you're sitting at your computer and you just like pull off something amazing and you scream and your parents run into the room like, <gasps> what happened? You're like, we just won the round. And they stare at you with that kind of distant, lifeless stare like, what are you doing? Oh, that's just me. Either way, though, we are in the sixth round now. With Raven having that one round advantage. Full playing it carefully, not letting his excitement get to him. As he moves up the stairs. There is someone waiting for him though. And it is Dupes. Catches a glimpse of his head. Dedo trying to find a frag through the wall. And actually going back towards the spawn. Oh, looks towards the back. And very good play from him. No doubt expecting someone to be there after having a very diminished support. Uh, covering his rear side. Stu's are going to find the final frag onto records. Pushes it to 3-3. Looking good so far. Dens sitting on one frag. Not, not so good for him just yet. But of course he still has the whole rest of the game to pick this one up. I want to take it away once again with Mr. Deeps, though. He seems to be playing a good defensive role on this B side, but I'd love for him to be peeking out into mid a bit more. Maybe Ravon trying to push top A side as he's not peeking out, or as um, Deeps is not peeking out that much. And, oh, Deeps fails the jump. That is very uncharacteristic of Deeps. 
And again, could have had maybe a Twinkie too much. And luckily the guy loves me, so he'll find that funny rather than offensive. On the other hand, though, it is a quiet battlefield. These players are not wanting to risk anything. I am gaming, of course, being the man on. They definitely just want to find a single frag before doing too much. Stuzel sprays heavily into mid. He did tag up Nakey, but Nakey walks away and will be able to regen his health. And actually really has regened his health. There's full on the front A side. Here's a whole bunch of rounds firing off. He is the only man in A for Raven at the moment. Oh, he does get taken out by Gotti. Spray through the wall from Girders. Great positioning there on their back A side to spray into the bomb area. And there's such an important role. Now more spray coming in from top A. Stuzor is going to have to peek away. It's actually Nagy coming in from front A. Bomb being faked. Smoke goes down. A little bit late from Nagy. I think he could have done that just a wee bit earlier to help out his teammate. And we do see Nakey taking out Gotti. Now Dupes actually takes out Dedo on, Dedo on the bomb and stews or onto Nakey and they'll be able to get this defuse. Such a nice try there from Raybon though towards the end of the round. They didn't have much to work with and uh, unfortunately Explosive weren't able to clean up the rest of the round. Now moving on, as we do see IM Gaming have actually taken the lead winning the last two rounds in a row. And uh, with full on a front spawn, are they going to be going B? Are they going to be pushing somewhere very aggressively? They have got the SMG on the front spawn. They really should do so. These players need to start utilizing the positions they're given and utilizing them to their max. Spray coming through the smoke. Chris is going to take out Dins. Full needs to be very careful about his next couple of moves. He doesn't know if the player is towards top ruins or lower. Although Dupes is down, so he shouldn't need to worry too much. And now finally moving forward. Oh, full spots. Gotti running away. They're very late. And, uh, oh, sorry, it was actually Chris. Got is your last man standing. Where is he? He is actually over onto the B side. It takes out two. Phil and Rico both going down. And he needs to find two more. Moving up towards Ruin. Tags up a player on the car. Oh, and he has actually spotted. Can he find the frag onto? No, he can't get the frag onto Dedo. Nakey coming in from behind. It's going to put it back to 4-4. Four, four. Getting very, very, very close here. Dedo on a front spawn. Please, somebody's going to use the front spawn, Dedo. Please, somebody's going to use it. Nah, he's going to run back. I really feel that if you're in the scope position, you can go for that mid roof push if you have a front spawn like that and uh, really apply some pressure on the A side. These two players, well, Paul just ran right past his, his counterpart. <laughs> Takes out Chris. These two pretty much bumping into each other in the darkness of the smoke. And uh, Phil will then be able to move all the way over to the B side. He picks up an AK and doesn't actually peek in towards mid. Does finally go back to cover his teammates to move over towards lower ruins. And uh, with that, Stuzel, your last man standing. He'll be taken up by Dedo, who does actually finally move on to the top mid side, just a little bit later than what I think he could have. And once again, Raybon. Two rounds in a row, take the lead. It seems to be really coming down to the wire on this one. And I really hope my 6-6 prediction at the halftime score will be, will be good. Now, full moving up onto the B side, looks like. It looks like I'm Gaming have adapted a little bit, threw an extra nade towards the MG building, and Full won't be able to push it as quickly as he would have wanted to. And France is waiting for him by that mid bin. Dead are going to spray, uh, spray in towards mid. As my vocal cords stunt like an old record player. Dead are onto Steez or Deeps onto Dens. Exchange of frags going on and on. As Fraz does seem to be coming under a little bit of fire, does sneak away though. Chris takes out Rickert, and means only full and Nakey are the, the ones remaining. There we go, Chris peeks out Dedo, and final frag on to Nakey, will be coming in from Deeps. Takes it to 5-5, five, five, even scores. Now each of these teams just need to grab a frag apiece. But then again, if um, if I am gaming, grab the next round, that it literally would have been two rounds to one team, two rounds to the other team, two rounds back again, which I think is a cool way to exchange rounds. Now Deeps moving up towards the top of Ruins with an AK. That long range ability needs to be put to its full effect. And he just seems to hide back. I think he could be a little bit more aggressive. Poke out towards MG, stop players getting towards mid, laying down some covering fire for his team, but instead just going to be sitting back and watching the stairs, not wanting to be too aggressive, rather wanting to stay alive. Stews, although, is going to be coming under, under some fire from mid. From Dins, actually. Dins has the opportunity to peek towards his right or left as he goes out this back door, but. Seems to be going neither way at the moment. 
There's a little silent walk out the left-hand side of that door. And moving in towards mid, his teammate SMG is uh, on towards red container. Where is Dupes? He's finally going to peek in towards mid. Can he spot any movement though? He does actually, uh, but it's from Midhouse. Dunn's taking out Stuzel, and that'll be the player on turn down. If they can take out Dupes, they're pretty much open up the B side. Rico not peeking much more of the Ruins area though. Full takes out Gotti as Deeps now decides to move forward. There's two players for Rayvon Gaming in the mid house, and this late in the game, I think that's very detrimental. They really should be trying to move forward as soon as he can. And no, they're pretty much giving away two frags to Deeps. Deeps, uh, I mean, pretty much missed it. If he gets himself three frags, wow, Rayvon, just wow. <laughs> Deeps, the most passive player. So far in this game, is currently top fragging with 14 frags. He's not peeking out. The times he does, he crawls forward, and then three players magically just, just walk into his aim. I am gaming though, starting off strong this round. Stuzor and Frazman both getting a kill apiece. It is the last round of the half. As uh, we really want the Rayborn side to get this one. It doesn't seem like it's going to be happening. Happening though. Gotti takes out Duns. As Frasman peeks over back towards front A. Nothing from him, though. Chris moving out towards the link. There is no one for him, though, either. But he'll be able to rotate all the way around the back of the last two players for Ravon. And I am gaming, playing this one very disciplined, not wanting to peek out too much. Stu's are just watching from behind the car. He might be able to spot spot Rickert. He does do so. Rickert getting heavily tagged up. Was not be able to re reply with any frags at all. Gotti takes out Rickert. Last player left standing is Dedo. And he gets taken out by Frasman right through the wall. 5-7 is the halftime score. And that was definitely a good half. Most definitely. Now we will have... Uh, Quick ready ups from the rave on side. We do actually have quick ready ups from that rave on side. Nice one. So, 7 5 is the half time score. It is one map A side. If you guys did just join us, this is the Fast Hosts Power Tournament. Of course, playing on the Fast Hosts servers in partnership, I believe, with Game Hosts and Epic Land. And uh, we do see Dedo with a very interesting position. Probably trying to watch for nades flying in from the MG side. And uh, he will be peeking over towards MG, still stuck with the scope. I find it very weird that he's still playing scope. Deeps has picked up the AK and has been working ever so well for him. And so he does move up towards top A, not looking over towards 10. Gotti on the mid-roof position. And that's definitely going to be playing in the advantage. And I am gaming being so aggressive here. As uh, Nike takes out Fraz, man. But Chris, Chris in there with the reply. Good teamwork from those two. Dedo's your last man standing. And I don't think there's much in this one for him. He doesn't have the firepower, the close range ability that you'll need to uh, to play on this map, especially in a clutch position. For the picks, yes, but you know I think it's going to his life is going to be so difficult to try and reclaim this bomb site. Now uh, has gotten himself the first frag there with the deagle. Picked up his SMG for all his hard work, but his position has been given away. Gotti lands the final frag there onto Dedo. That's going to push it to eight five, and I really don't want to see the ball start rolling and I am gaming so I don't want Ravon to put up a fight here I want Dedo to drop scope I want him to pick up the AK and put firepower down on that B side allowing his SMGs to push up or clear out the mid area or, I don't know something a little bit different Dedo with a nade onto Stu's or Gotti sitting in mid he'll be able to cover anyone coming up from MG side as the Nike tries to push out into the A area there's not there's Dins and Full on SMG Full is playing an interesting position with the SMG over on Tin's side, although we'll be able to push into mid later on into the round. Chris takes out full. Dedo misses a shot onto uh, back A bricks. And that'll allow France to push in. Take out Dins. Gotti onto Nike. And here it pretty much just once again goes downhill for the Ravon side. I have faith though. Ravon have it in them to be able to bring it back. But I think there's just a couple of changes that need to take effect immediately. Rico takes out Gotti. As Dedo moves towards the back A area, pulls out the scope, thinks he spotted a player on the back of that bomb, lands the shot onto Dupes, just clipping it or spotting his shoulder. And of course, this pushes it down to a 2 on 2. Chris on the front A side, though, will be able to spot anyone moving in from the Girders area. Looks away at probably the worst time he could. And now Franzman watching onto the bomb. A defuse coming in. Well, they're trying to stop it. Chris gives away his position. There's only 10 seconds left. 
Oh, Francis needs to run away. Seven seconds passes. There's no way that Nike can defuse this one, even if he gets the frags. And that is so well played from the IM Gaming side just to draw their attention away for long enough. And that'll take it to 9-5. As uh, IM Gaming's lead increased to four rounds now. And it just doesn't seem like there's much on the Ravens' plate to change up at the moment. SMG's for Ravens still playing a little bit passively, only Fall being, sorry, Din's being the one aggressive on the A side. He's the only one in there actually holding it. There's no AK on the girders area to try and um, lay some extra firepower into back A. Gotti in a lovely position here in mid, able to peek out and uh, spot players on the lower A area. Of course, this means he cannot take any fire from the right hand side unless the player is like lower turn spraying through the wall and hoping he gets lucky. Full on to Stu's although, and Gott is going to be a little bit worried because that frag happened right below him. And uh, he will actually drop down towards lower mid. Denson with a deagle. Chris onto Dins for the reply. And uh, oh, Chris, your last man standing gets taken out by Nike. And that'll push it to 9 6, reducing it down to only three runs difference. But still, it's such a big ask from both of these players, or sorry, from the Raven side to bring this one back. But let's see if they can do it. I, I have hope in them. I, I believe they can do it. Dead is going top ruins with scope. This is a good start for him. He needs to lay down loads of covering fire though, I believe from all that smoke and nades. He needs to realize that it is a B push. Chris takes out Dedo as that SMG, of course, is always going to outpower any weapon close range. Unless it's a shotgun. I think you might have the advantage with a shotgun. Nade out towards the car. Back turn. As Chris does actually tag a Rickard. He's going to peek around at the Deagle, see if he can maybe find, close off the kill. Rickard, they would have gone and run into the garage for some cover. There you go. And uh, he does want himself some regen help. Rickard spots players dropping out of the Ruins building to try and get that bomb down. Rickard's position has been given away. Has got an AK with him, although the players pushing up on him will know where he is. Wow, Chris doesn't actually know where he is for some other really odd reason. And... Uh, with that record, might actually just escape here. No, he doesn't. Franz takes him down, reducing it down to a 2 1 2. And uh, ooh, Dins takes out Gotti. This means Franz is your last man standing. And he is very much squeezed in here between two players. Dins going to pick him off with the AK. Two rounds in a row now for Ravon. Having hope, guys. Come on. Come on. I'm pretty sure Ravon can do this. And it does seem that they are being a little bit more aggressive, but I am gaming seem to be I don't know, they're just they they're not as team worky ish. If that's even a word it is now. They're not being very team worky ish. Gotta get taken up by Rickards early AK spray as Franzman tries to push up through the front A side. There is no smokes from the I am gaming side. I think that's slightly a flaw, as it does easily picks up a frank over towards front A. Now Stuzo getting tagged up. Dedo takes out Stuzo. There's the scope on B. Ruins coming into play. Chris takes out Dins. Dedo flicking backwards and forth. Not finding anything towards the back A site. Nagy's going to be sitting inside. Ooh, Rickard spots Chris just below him. But Dedo coming into call. Dupes is your last man standing. He is towards front A with the bomb. An AK in hand. No scope for him. And uh, Nagy laying down. Gerdes is not going to spot him. Of course, he's not going to spot Nagy either. Looks like he wants to go for the peak over towards Top Ruins. He has spotted. Dedo takes him out. And now rushing towards Garage. Looks like he's going to try and r rotate fast towards the B bomb site. Taps away as he tries to land the shot there onto Nike. Although I doubt Nike is going to be giving away his position that easily. He has got the opportunity to try and stop the bomb plant if Dupes plants it on well, that side. But uh, Nike. Oh, has spotted dupes, does get the frag, brings it back to 9-8. Only one round away from evening this out after being four rounds in the lead. Ravon clawing this one back slowly but surely. And this is a great comeback from their half. Nate's going out from full. Let's see what Mr. Dins is up to those. He's going to be the first SMG into this A side. Full with an 8 on to Gotti. Nice little late Nate to catch any players moving into their positions. Rickard gets himself a double as Chris and Fraz both drop. My word, Chris has been on absolute form this half. Full on to Dupes as he catches Dupes running out of the mid building. Last player left standing is Mr. Dedo. Sorry, I lie. He's not an IM Gaming. It is Stuzor, who I just passed again. 
AK in hand tries to find anything. Rickard gets himself the hat trick of the round, and that'll push it to 9 9, evening it out. My word. And uh, looking over at these scores, I'm getting very close to the team scores. Ray, well, not so much, but hey, Rickard's doing a great job. Where is he? Let's see what he is up to with that AK. Nade goes out over towards mid. Doesn't look like he's going to be playing the same position. Instead, going over towards the B side, changing it up, making sure that I'm gaming is not able to keep track of him. It looks like he might be going over towards the A side. Actually falling all the way back down to spawn. Looks like he might be trying to find players over on top A. Unfortunately, he won't find anything there. And uh, with the dupes going towards top A, doubles back just a little bit, making sure that no one is spraying on his position. As uh, he contemplates the possibility of shooting down into the floor. Unfortunately, he's not going to land him any frags. There's a player just below him. Uh, he peeks back, a spots a foot, tags a bricket, and just lays down a couple more rounds, hoping that he can connect with something. Fraz and Chris come alive, Dins and Aki drop, and this means that it's all down to Rickett and Fall to bring this one back for his team. Deep's covering in mid though, I think is going to make it very difficult for them to try and move into any reasonable position to stop that bomb plant. Only Rickett left, and he gets taken out by Deep's peeking into mid, pushes it to 10-9. First round here for the break again for I am Gaming after five rounds, they get the first one. So definitely a close match. Now we do see Dedder with his nade over towards the mid area, trying to catch any players off guard as they move. Oh, does actually catch Stuzel uh, off as he moves into the mid building. Fraz trying to push in towards Bricks. Let's have run. I'm not too sure why. But I guess time will tell if it pays off for him either way. I doubt it's going to matter that much in the long run. It is backlot. Players spray everywhere all the time. And of course, early on in the run, you're not going to be in a position good enough to, uh, to actually lay down any spray through walls. Full still sitting, watching mid. Frasman, very undecisive, finally decides to move into the bomb area. And with Chris finally moving up into ruins, takes out Dedo. It is a four on three. Rayvon currently the man behind, and currently the round behind two. So they definitely want to pick up this round. Or at least make it seem like they have a chance to try and find a flaw in the attack from IM Gaming. It seems to be very slow at the moment, very meticulous from IM Gaming. You see Dupes making sure that he watches that whole mid area, top ruins everything he can for just a glimmer of movement. His teammates moving into position to try and get that bomb down as a. Uh, Franz gets heavily tagged up from Goethe Spray. There's two players in Dupes' view. He misses both. Ricker takes him out, punishing him for his bad aim. As uh, Franz gets that bomb down right behind the bomb. Nike takes out Gotti. Franz is your last man standing. He has been spotted. His position's been given away. There's two players towards Goethe's and Frené. And these two players could just sandwich Franz man in at the moment. We do see... Both of the players now for A1 moving it. It was Nakey and Full. Full gets the final frag though. It's going to push it back up to 10 10. Man, this is getting really close now. I mean, I expected it to be close. I didn't expect it to be this close though. I am gaming though, looking over the scoreboard. Only have four frags difference between top and bottom scores. While well, Raven have got seven. But uh, their top frags really are top fragging and keeping their heads high. Dead. It gets the early nade here onto Gotti. Looking strong. As Full moves forward onto Ruins, being aggressive. I love the style of play here on B-side. I feel this is how it should be played every round. Although there's a player just off his left-hand side. Can he spot the play? Yes, he finally gets the frag there onto Stuzor. And it uh, does take a tag or two, but we'll be able to run into MG, regen his health. Chris onto Dedo, though. That's scoped down for Ravon side. And SMG as Dins also goes down to Chris's SMG. Naked trying to stop the bomb plant going down. He has heard it. This play coming in from every rift direction, though. Fries takes out Nick. He fills your last man standing. Where is he? He is over in mid. He has spotted a player on the <laughs> on the JCB. Finally takes out Chris. There is a player on the bomb. Dupes is going to be there with the AK and does take out full for the 11-10. There's only three rounds in this. I am gaming and I need the next two to win it while Ravon need all three rounds available right now to win the game. If not, go into a tie. We'll go into a MR3. But uh, once we get into overtime, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Let's keep on the round at hand. Once again, Full being very aggressive over here on the B side. 
does make some noise pushing out. Spots Chris as he tries to push up on Ruins. And uh, Full now going to need to fall back. There might be another player around the corner. He knows there's this, op this possibility. And playing it very calm and disciplined. I would have that itchy urge to peek out though. Oh, nice one from Full. Takes out Stuzor. And now I am gaming down to only two players. God, he gets the first. And he's looking in the right direction. Unfortunately, that player isn't there as he looked. And now Gotti, I think, should have gone into mid-roof. Will help clear out that A-side. Also be great for covering the A-bomb if it does go down. Deeps getting heavily tagged up. Gets taken down by Rickert. Gotti drops down. He is the last man standing. Does take out Rickert. Now there's only a scope and AK left for Rayvon as they need to try and defend this bomb site. Gotti moves in towards Gerdes. Dedo is just sitting watching mid, making sure that the play does not peek out from Ruins. Uh, from the midhouse into ruins. Nakey's found Gotti though, and now needs to try. And now Gotti needs to try and get the bomb down. Well, first, he needs to try and find Dead. Although Dead with a scope is going to have the massive advantage in that situation. There's very little chance that an AK would have been able to find the scope there. Two rounds left in this. There is only two rounds left. Each of the teams need two rounds to win it. And after two maps that went, you know, 13-7 apiece, this is very close from either side. Oh, this is getting very close either way. Now Dedo going to peek over onto the B side once again, feeling confident with his scope skills on B. Stu's are pushing up towards tank. He's got Gotti in mid. Fraz and I believe that is Stu's or trying to push into the bomb site. It's actually Chris. I lie. Stu's in mid. It's right. Full takes out Gotti and Chris replies onto Dins. Down to A3 versus 4. Full moves up in towards mid, making sure that they do have extra backup as they try and get the bomb down. I don't know what Franz was trying to do there, but either way, it did not work out for him as Dedo easily picks up the scope frag. And now, full spraying out onto that bomb, making sure that no one gets that bomb down. Stu takes out Phil. Dedo still on the B side, and Phil, Phil's going to be very careful about that. Chris moving back towards mid to try and clear out Phil, but unfortunately, Dedo there with scope takes him out. Stuza goes down, and that gives Ravon the game point, my word. I cannot believe it's come down to this. Having a last final look here at the scores as this might be the final round here for the Ravon side. They might win this game. Hopefully the pressure does not get to IM Gaming and they're able to bring this one back for an overtime. Stu's are pushing up onto the speed side. No one has dropped to opening nades though. Chris gets the first frag onto Dens. And this is probably the most important round of everything. If this comes down to a tie, then everything we've played pretty much just comes down to the six rounds which is weird to think about. A player down a piece as Rickett decides to be very aggressive over on the B side as he does push up. Stuzel has gone down, as you can see, expressing his anger in his play. Rickett moving up into mid. His teammate helping spray the lower mid area. Dedo takes out dupes. Frasman replies onto full again. Three on three. This is so close. Has Rickett spotted the player in mid, though? No, he ha Oh, he has actually... Sprays goes out into the fence. The bomb has gone down by Chris. It is now all on to Ravon to bring this one back. They have got the, the map point in their favor, of course. If they lose this round, it will go into an overtime. So they still have that to comfort them just slightly. They need to wait for the rest of Ravon to get in there, though, as before Nike moves in. Oh, we do see Fraz going down. Gotti goes down too. It's all onto Chris. Last man standing for IM Gaming. It will be Dedo to get the final frag there onto Chris. GG's being called. Fantastic game there from Ravon. Superb stuff coming back from being the first map down, winning the second one on City Streets, the third map being chosen by IM Gaming. But oh, as we can see there, 13-11 in favor of Ravon. A fantastic group game to close with the evening. But that's it, guys. That is the third and final game done for tonight's group match from the Fastest Power Tournament. Massive kudos to Fast Hosts, Game Shadows, and of course Epic Land. Go check out Epic Land or Epic Nine, the new land from Epic or from Epic Land to be coming out. You guys know what I mean. You guys can follow us on Twitter at forward slash quad V on Facebook, the same thing. Forward slash quad V TV if you want to check out any of our VODs. Of course, this VOD will be available on YouTube. Later on, I am Menace. If you guys want to follow me, I'm at Menace on Twitter and forward slash Menace FPS on Facebook. Either way, I hope you guys have had a fantastic evening. And we'll be bringing you guys more coverage from this tournament. Should be soon. Keep your eyes on Tech 9. Otherwise, just on the Quad V website for any updated schedules. And other than that, enjoy your evening.